Ghost Recon Future Soldier released in 2012, and after playing Ghost Recon Wildlands and Breakpoint, I had to go back and play some of the earlier entries in the series. I never played this game, which allows me to review it honestly without feeling nostalgic, and let you know if the game is still worth buying in 2020. This section is going to be a lot shorter than it normally is because there isn't really much story in Future Soldier. You play as a deadly ghost who goes by the name Kozak. Kozak is a very different character opposed to Nomad from the newer games. For starters, Kozak is not the squad leader of his group, therefore instead of giving orders, he is taking orders. I'm not sh quite sure why they decide to do this as I think being a squad leader is much more interesting, especially when that squad leader is Scott Mitchell, but regardless though, Kozak overall was alright. It's kind of hard to judge his character since we really know nothing about him and he doesn't even have that many scenes in the game. This story is really short. The game itself took about 11 hours for me to complete and about only an hour of that were cutscenes. The story was pretty simple and straightforward and rather than a single antagonist you are just fighting a Russian special ops group called Bodart, which were basically Russian versions of the ghost. So it was pretty interesting because they practically matched the ghosts in both skill and technology, even though they still get mowed down by four ghosts each. Easily. Your ghost squad is sent on a mission of revenge after the other ghost squads across the world are being killed by Bodark and a Russian group called Raven's Rock that plan to take over the entire country of Russia. The plot is a little confusing at times and never really had me that engaged and it's very obvious the story takes a backseat to the gameplay and it's kind of just meant to be a placeholder for why the ghosts are infiltrating all these urban environments. The ending of the story was okay and while predictable I'd say it was satisfying and a pretty cool moment. So again, the story is really short and for the most part takes a backseat, but overall it's okay. If you're looking for a really in-depth story then you won't have that in Future Soldier, but if you're going to be buying this game, it's going to be for the gameplay. Now the gameplay in Ghost Recon Future Soldier is by far the best part of the game, but it also certainly has its fair share of flaws. But let's start with the good. First of all, I love the futuristic gameplay elements in the game. You get to use things like camel blend, sensors, and a metallic x-ray and everything. It's very unique and I really appreciate that they were willing to take a chance and make a unique game. Using your futuristic tech to gain the advantage on your unsuspecting enemies was very fun and a cool concept, and all the cool little unique gadgets you get to use are very fun. Now for the most part, this game puts a major emphasis on stealth and I loved the stealth in this game. Sing Shot was done really well and was so much fun to use, to take out large groups of enemies, and the slow motion effect was an extremely nice touch. This is one of the first stealth games that I actually felt like a ghost, and I don't think I've ever felt so tactical in a stealth game like I did in Future Soldier. The game really forces you to slow down and be smart by using your drone or patiently waiting for enemies to be perfectly lined up for that Sing shot. By far my favorite stealth mission was when Kozak was sent on his lonesome in a Russian prison and had to extract a prisoner. Sneaking through the courtyards and hallways in the pitch black of the night was so much fun and gave me some major Splinter Cell vibes. It felt so cool and it required lots of skill to get through the multiple areas of guards. There are another handful of fun stealth missions and when the game really focused on stealth is when it was truly at its best. Now since stealth is so great, where the real issue in Future Soul Soldier's gameplay is when you go loud. I was really disappointed how many times it was mandatory to get into loud firefights, and the depth and precision from stealth is nowhere present during these shootouts. Future Soldier basically becomes the division in these sequences with lots of cover and third person based combat, and it really sucks because every mission has at least one part where you are required to go loud, and it really ruined the experience for me. And I just didn't have the same patience with the stealth as I did with the combat, so I often just tried to rush through which resulted in a lot of deaths, especially since I played on hardcore where it only takes one or two shots to kill you. These sequences were very frustrating and some of them took 10 plus tries for me to complete, and it's worth noting that the checkpoints in this game aren't too generous either. A lot of the time once I died I'd have to repeat like a whole 5 minutes of gameplay which really can make those gunfights a lot more stressful knowing that if you lose, you gotta start over. 
There's also not much to do when it comes to the combat. Your gun and frag grenades are your only options for killing enemies and it gets really old and dragged out. I don't understand why they couldn't just give you the option between stealth or combat because stealth is so much better. There were also a fair share of sequences where you would shoot enemies from a mounted machine gun and these also felt very basic and boring at times. However, something that really impressed me about Future Soldier is its very in-depth gun customization. I was very surprised to see how many weapon attachment options I was given and you could even assemble your weapons according to your own playstyle. You could assemble your loadout to be more mobile or tanky depending on which you preferred which was a really cool thing to have. Each gun also had a strength and weakness that you would choose based on what kind of environment you will be fighting in. However there is no form of character customization and although you can choose what gadgets you want to carry, you can only carry two at a time and you are almost always going to be using sensors so not much choice there. So overall I have a very mixed opinion on gameplay. Stealth is a amazing and super immersive and fun while combat is none of those things. Now usually this is the part where I would talk about the game's open world, but Future Soldier is not an open world game. Its environments and gameplay is very linear. Each place you will visit will take place in separate missions, and while this isn't necessarily bad, it does feel like an old and outdated mission design. However, it's not so bad because each mission you will play feels very different and has a different environment. You will play pretty much in every biome in this game. Snow, desert, forests, swamps, mountains, all of it. I did often find myself enjoying the set pieces in this game game, they were really cinematic and often felt like you were in an action movie. There is a little bit of repetition as most of these mandatory combat sequences I was talking about almost always involve either securing an area or holding a position while you wait for a helicopter to extract you. Something else I like though is how seamless the transition from gameplay to action scenes were, and the constant communication and strategizing from the Ghost Squadron was super immersive and actually pretty realistic, which sounds kinda weird to say about a futuristic game, but there are definitely a lot lot of realism elements to this game. Now usually graphics aren't too much to worry about when it comes to the newer games, but Future Soldier is from 2012, so this is worth talking about. Graphics in this game, in my opinion, are okay. The game still looks fairly good, however it is quite obvious while you're playing this game that it is from the previous gen. Again, if you're like me, graphics aren't a huge deal, and honestly these graphics were good enough to be playable in 2020. Some of the textures are really low res, and the lighting can sometimes be really bright, but the game actually has some nice weather and fog effects that look really good even for 2020. I've seen better looking games from 2012, but again, I think if you're even considering buying this game, graphics should not be the main factor. Now, performance. Big issue on PC. Since this game is older, it falls under that time period where Ubisoft had some terrible PC ports. And I'm not gonna lie to you, the PC port for Future Soldier is also really bad. The controls feel a little awkward on keyboard and mouse, and while there's no image input lag or anything, the sprinting and movement felt pretty awkward and janky. The game caps at whatever refresh rate your monitor is, so you may or may not get good frames with that, it really depends. There are also a lot of areas where you may receive big frame drops, which is really unacceptable for an 8 year old game to be this poorly optimized. I didn't receive any stuttering, but had a lot of crashing. I had to crash about every other mission or so, and on the last mission, geez, I had to have had at least 7 game crashes. Also, the co-op on PC does does not work like at all. The co-op is completely broken, so a very poor PC port overall. I also wanted to point out that the story cutscenes look absolutely awful. They are rendered in like 720p, lip syncing is completely off, and the audio is super bugged. For some reason in a cutscene the audio is super loud and while in the game the audio is quiet. There are lots of moments when the game's age can really show, especially with the presentation and performance. So, to recap, Future Soldier has a pretty basic and straightforward story with some great stealth mechanics but disappointingly basic and frustrating mandatory combat, with an outdated mission structure and some huge issues on its performance, and it has okay graphics. So, should you buy Ghost Recon Future Soldier in 2020? And this is a bit more of a complicated answer. For starters, if you're going to buy this game, I really would not recommend getting it on PC, so if you're wanting to get the game it would either need to be on Xbox 360 
360 or PlayStation 3. And I would really only recommend getting the game if you're a diehard Ghost Recon fan and feeling nostalgic. If you are new to the Ghost Recon series, I would start with Wildlands, not Future Soldier. I bought this game for $6 and that's probably around the amount you should be paying for it as well. I'd say if you're going to buy it that you should be getting it for at least $10 or less. Anything more than that and you're gonna waste your money. It's not a bad game by any means, but it has aged pretty poorly, but make no mistake, I can definitely understand why so many of you love this game. I'm sure the game felt amazing at the time of its release. However, if you aren't a big Ghost Recon fan, then this game is better off left in the past. Anyways, that does it for this edition of Should You Buy. If this video helped in any way or if you have anything to add, please let me know down below in the comments. Also, feel free to comment which game you would like to see next for Should You Buy. Also, if you're interested in playing co-op with me and others or just want to discuss some of my videos, please feel free to join my Discord server. The link is in the description. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, a like on the video and a subscribe to the channel would be very much appreciated. And other than that, I'll see you all in the next video and have a great rest of your day, Assassins.